In this demo, the cable modeling tools in CAD figure will be demonstrated. We will model a single conductor power line running partially adjacent to a twisted pair above an infinite ground. The model setup will begin in the 3D view of CAD figure. Subsequently, the schematic view will be used to add the cable terminations and the excitation. We start a new model, but note that some variables and named points have already been defined. The model unit is set to centimeters. The cables are modeled above a PEC ground plane, which is set under plane ground. All of the cable functionality in GADVECO is found under the Cables tab. This is a special tab that is activated from the Home tab. For ease of demonstration, we will define the cable paths by a series of named points, but in general, named points do not have to be used. Multiple cable paths can be defined in the same model. We define a total of five cable paths. As stated, Named points have already been defined, so we use Control shift to click in the named points in the cable path definition. The first path runs from A to B and is labeled CP1. We repeat these steps to complete all five paths. So we have path CP1 from A to B, path CP2 from D to B, path CP3 from B to C, path CP4 from E to C and path CP5 from C to F. Next we define the two cable types that will be used in this model. Firstly the power line will be modeled as a single conductor. The core will be copper and the radius R1. The insulation will be the PET dielectric and the thickness T1. The label will be wire 1. The variables and media have already been defined. The PET dielectric has a permittivity of 2.25 and loss tangent of 0.004. The twisted pair is set up to also have a copper core and PET insulation. The radius and pitch length variables have already been defined. The next step in the workflow is to create a cable harness. A cable harness consists of a collection of cables and connectors, which is solved together. We create a cable harness and rename it to H1. Next we specify which cable will be used on which path, as well as the connections and terminations. Cable types are created between cable connectors. Each connector has a number of pins. Each pin connects to another cable or a termination. The first connector is for the termination of cable path CP1. The connector will be placed at the start of the cable path. The path terminal is therefore CP1.start. If we want, we can give the connection, that is the pin on the connector, a name. Here we name the pin PW. The connector can also be given a label. Here we choose P1. The connector is shown as a red dot in the 3D view. We will shortly also see the schematic view. We continue adding connectors. The next connector is at the end of path CP5. The connection name is again PW, but this connector is labeled P2. The third connector is at the beginning of path CP2. This connector will have two connections. Similarly, we add connector S2 at the end of path CP4. This then gives a total of four connectors. Now that we have the connectors defined, we can specify the cable types that are used between the different connectors. In the original model description, a power line consisting of a single wire must be defined from the beginning of cable path 1 through path 3 down to the end of cable path 5. To define this cable, click on Cable Instance. The cable type is wire 1. The cable begins at connector P1 
and ends at connector P2. If we check the box Select Shortest Route, CatFicker will automatically choose the combination of cable paths, resulting in the shortest distance between the source and destination points. The specific pins that the cable connects to is specified under the group Signals and Connections. The pins on both the P1 and P2 connectors were named PW, and for convenience we named this specific connection also PW. The last cable instance is that of the twisted pair. This runs from connector S1 to S2. Or in terms of the cable paths, from the beginning of cable path 2, through cable path 3 and terminating at the end of cable path 4. The cable type is TWP, the source is S1 and destination is S2. We again label the signal names for convenience the same as the connection names. This cable instance is labeled S. So we have the twisted pair that runs from the connector at D through to E. And we have the single wire which is our power line running from the connector at position A right through to the connector at F. To view the schematic view, right click on the cable harness and select cable schematic. Next we add the sources and terminations in the schematic view. The power line will be excited at connector P1 with a voltage source. We click the cable schematic tab and add a voltage source with settings as shown. The power line is a low impedance line. We also add a resistor of 1 ohm. Checking the boxes probe voltage and probe current will enable the viewing of the current and voltage over this resistor in post FECO. At the end of the resistor will be the ground. Drag and place the items where convenient and connect together. At the end of the cable path 5, a 1 microhenry inductor is placed, connected to ground. A resistor is placed between the two pins of connector S1. In effect, we are terminating the twisted pair in this resistance of R0. In addition, a stray capacitance is placed between the twisted pair and ground. Then on connector S2 we will place the low pass filter circuit. The SPI circuit has three pins. The circuit, consisting of two capacitors and an inductor has already been defined and we copy the circuit definition. The low pass filter is placed at the end of the twisted pair. The twisted pair is terminated to ground with a stray capacitance and a resistor is also placed as shown. Since the cable harness is excited with a voltage source, it will be a radiating cable harness. The cable coupling properties are changed on the solution tab of the cable harness. If no external sources are present, we can select either of the radiating options, but if an external source is also present, we must select radiating taking irradiation into account. For cables higher than a fifth of a wavelength above ground, we must select the method of moments. But also if the cable harness is not shielded, we must select the MTL method. Twisted pairs sometimes require finer sampling. The cable solver is based on solving straight sections of cable. Since the twisted pair is twisted by nature, we require a few samples over each turn of the twisted pair. 
The sampling is set on the cable path properties of those cable paths containing twisted pairs. On the advanced tab, select specify maximum separation distance. We use the variable dp. This variable has already been defined to take into account the height above the ground as well as the pitch length. We will do the same for all three paths containing the twisted pair. The rest of the setup is setting the frequency and running FICO. Those steps are not shown in the demo. This concludes the demonstration. For help in setting up your own models, please contact FICO support.